Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 4 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the basic audio recording techniques in Logic 10, including low latency mode and auto punch. But we'll also take a look at a basic editing function called quick swipe comping. In the previous video, one of the topics that we discussed was I.O. buffer and I.O. buffer size and how that affects our recording and how that affects latency. One thing I wanted to show you is that in this video, I'm intentionally using a higher buffer size because I want to demonstrate a mode in Logic called low latency mode, which optimizes the amount of latency regardless of what buffer size you have selected. Like I said before, two of the main functions I'm going to show you today are low latency mode and auto punch. And in order to access those, you have to right click up here and choose customize control bar. So we're going to add these icons to our control bar. So what you do is make sure that auto punch is selected and then also make sure that low latency mode is selected. And it'll add an icon for both of those to the control bar. Now that both of those have been added to the control bar, you can turn on low latency mode here. And essentially what this does is it optimizes the latency uh, regardless of what IO buffer size you've selected. So in my case, I chose 1024, which would normally result in about 50 milliseconds of latency. So with low latency mode on, it reduces the latency so I can go ahead and record even though I've set my buffer to a higher value. Another function of low latency mode is to temporarily bypass plugins that are causing too much latency. So before we start recording, let's turn on input monitoring and double check that we're getting signal from the guitar. All right, so it looks like we're getting a uh, signal just fine from the guitar. And one quick thing I want to go over with you real quick is your monitoring uh, volume versus your gain on your audio interface. If you come down to your lower left corner, you'll see the channel strip for the track that you've selected. And you'll also see the volume fader for that track. Now, the volume fader here doesn't actually control the gain of the file that you're recording. All it does is it controls how much added gain, or in my case, I'm gonna pull the gain down, how much reduced gain you're removing or adding to that track. So you're controlling the output of the track, but you're not actually changing how loud the file you recorded is. In order to do that, uh, you'd actually have to raise or lower the gain, also known as trim, on your audio interface. So let's take a listen to a guitar recording I made in advance, and you'll notice that some of the notes aren't right, they're out of time, and then we'll learn how to correct those using auto punch. All right, so let's take a listen to that uh, just one more time. Uh, the bad notes seem to start at about uh, measure eight. Uh, so we'll start a little couple measures earlier than that. We'll start at measure six. All right, so the bad notes started about measure eight and the recording doesn't really come back into sync. Uh, again until about measure 12. So rather than re-record this entire passage, we're going to use a function called auto punch, which allows us to dub in a new take on top of the previous take and then edit the two together to create a flawless composite take. So let's turn on auto punch in the control bar. Uh, this is the icon for auto punch. And after we turn that on, you'll see that a red bar has appeared in our ruler. And this uh, red bar is our auto punch range, or our punch range, rather. And so it designates uh, where we're going to record and dub in the new material. So I'm going to set it from measure 6 to, uh, to measure 12. 
And what you can do is you can set your playhead anywhere you want before the punch range. And when you hit record, it won't actually record there. It'll only record where the punch range is. So you could say start at measure two here and then start playing along with the song to get the feel right. But then Logic won't start recording until you actually get to that punch range. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to redub the material from measure 6 to measure 12. I'm actually going to start playing right from the get-go, but you're not going to actually hear my guitar until the punch range starts at measure 6. All right, so what I did there is I started playing before the punch range, and then I played through the punch range and after the punch range. But the only thing that was actually grabbed in the recording was that punch range from measure 6 to measure 12. So when you record a recording on top of a pre-existing region, what happens is you get a take folder, and that's what we're looking at right now. On top, you see the composite take of the two recordings together. In the middle, you see my second take, what I just recorded just now. And then at the bottom, you see take one, which is the original take that I had before. Take folders are really cool because they allow us to piece together different takes to create a flawless composite take in a process called comping. So we can take take one here and then add take two to it, do a little bit, bit of editing and render it in place and we'll have a perfect take. So if you double click on the, take, the top of the take folder, it will collapse all of the takes into it. And there's no need to have auto punch and, and uh, low latency mode on anymore. So let's turn those off. Next, let's fine tune our edits uh, to make this truly a seamless take. And you'll notice that uh, Logic has already edited our new take into our previous take. And these edit points are not really optimal because they've been cropped right on top of a loud point in a waveform, which that's bad. Uh, when you edit two waveforms together, you want to find an area of low amplitude to join them. So I'm just going to open the take folder again and zoom in a bit. And again, to open the take folder, you just double click on the top part of it. And we're going to use a feature called Quick Swipe Comping, which allows us to grab this little white line here, and we can pull it to the left or to the right to set where we want the end point of the edit to be. So I'm just going to pull this to the right and put it in between two waveforms so that it's uh, less noticeable in a more seamless edit. So now that we've uh, fixed the in point of the punch, let's go to the right and we're going to fix the out point of the punch to, again, make this a more seamless edit. So uh, same thing as before, you just grab the little uh, white line, a gray, gray line, this time pull it to the left and we're going to put it in between two waveforms at an area of low amplitude. So if I zoom out here, you'll be able to see the entire take and what's shown in gray is not being used and what's shown in blue is being used as, as part of the take. One of the other great things about quick swipe comping is that those edit points are automatically crossfaded, so there's no need to go back and manually crossfade them. All right, so now that we've got our take put together, uh, let's listen to it one last time uh, just so we can see what it sounds like, and it should sound like a flawless, seamless take, almost like I played it perfect the first time. And I'm not saying there isn't any merit to just practicing and getting, getting the entire take right, but uh, this function definitely makes editing a heck of a lot easier. All right, now that we've double checked our take and it sounds great, uh, we just need to render this into a new file. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that all of these edit points, the more of these you have, the more processing power and the more system resources are used up. So one way to alleviate that load on your processor is again to render this all as a new file. So we're gonna do this with a function called flatten and merge. And the way you find this is you click on this little A icon up here, pulls down a drop down menu, and you click on flatten and merge. 
And what flatten and merge does is it consolidates the two takes together and also adds crossfades at all of the edit points so we can have that seamless take that we wanted. So after you click on flatten and merge, it renders uh, all the takes into a new file so that the computer doesn't have to process each of those edit points anymore. In the next couple episodes, we'll continue to look at some of Logic's audio recording techniques. So we'll talk about things like cycle record, another type of punch called quick punch, and some other things as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.